Welcome back to another episode of Bass Fishing Declassified. In today's episode, we got anglers from around the country that are gonna share some essential jig fishing tips that are gonna help you catch a few more bass. Hey guys, welcome back to another edition of Bass Fishing Declassified. Much appreciated you guys joining us today. And we are gonna be talking about flipping jigs in the Ozark Lakes during the fall time of the year. Now, this works in the Ozarks, but it's also gonna work in about any other highland and poundland across the country. So it's a, one of my favorite ways to fish. I mean, flipping a jig, I'm guessing it's, it's either my first or second favorite technique in bass fishing, only behind jerk baits. So I've been doing it a long time, gonna give you guys some good information there. So when you're talking about flipping jigs in the Ozarks in the fall, you're basically dealing with three different types of situation, three different types of cover. One is flipping it to rocky banks. The second is flipping boat docks. And the third is flipping some type of flooded cover. Now, in the fall time of the year, we don't get a lot of flooded cover, but occasionally we'll get some weather systems in there where the water comes up rapidly and you have flooded bushes in the water. You know, the Ozarks are notorious for having flooded bug brushes, flooded willow trees. If you get that type of situation in the fall time of the year, uh, flipping a jig is one of the, the top ways to catch them. And the jig that I flip here is my own design. It's a block of old school jig. Normally I'm flipping like a 5 8 ounce in a variety of colors depending upon the water clarity. So the the uh, the flooded cover is probably the, the least amount of time that you're going to spend flipping a jig in the fall time. For the most part, you're dealing with flipping it to rocky banks, laydowns, or boat docks, that type of a thing. The Ozarks and a lot of Highland Lakes have a lot of different docks on them. For example, lake like Lake of the Ozarks is full of docks. Uh, Tabor Rock Lake here in Missouri, you've got a lot of docks, especially commercial docks. And these bass really like to get around docks in the fall time of the year because under normal conditions, we do have a little bit of lower water levels. And I like to fish docks and I like to flip a jig on docks during the low water levels. Most of the time, again, I'm flipping the 5 8 ounce model. The water visibility is under two foot. I'm usually using uh, like the, you know, the black and blue or the darker colors. If that water visibility is like over two and a half feet, I'm going to my browns and green pumpkins. Usually with just some type of a zoom, big salty chunk, some type of a chunk type trailer on it. And on the docks, I'm flipping it and pitching it behind the walkways. This is the key area in the fall time of the year. The areas where the walkways intersect with the inside part of the dock is a prime target and also skipping and flipping that jig under the walkways themselves around the floats is a really good way to catch them. A lot of times people plant brush piles around these docks like that. Flipping that jig in and around the docks is a really good way to catch them. Now on the rocky banks, um, you have a combination of rock and wood both. I like to fish and I like to flip a jig on the steep rocky banks in the fall time of the year. Normally, I'll go up in the upper river arms, the upper creek arms, I'll get on the channel swing banks, and I'll just pitch and flip that jig straight into the bank and just flip it right to the bank, hop it out to about six or eight foot of water, and especially I like to target any type of lay down wood on there. If there's any type of lay down wood on the steeper banks, that's just a bonus, but I'm really looking for that bigger rock and those rock transitions. Also, just isolated wood covers are a really good uh, area. If you go back into the creeks and on the flatter banks, a lot of times in the fall, you'll see isolated laydowns, root wad stumps, and flipping that jig on those isolated wood laydowns is a really effective way to catch them. So anyway, guys, give it a try. Uh, once that water temperature starts falling down into the low 60s, especially into the 50s, that's when the jig bite gets really good. They start getting off the worms and the creature baits and the tubes. They start gravitating more to the jigs and it's a really good time to catch quality fish. So hope it helps you guys catch a few. We'll see y'all next time. Hey guys, I wanna to talk to you about how you can catch more bass on lowland reservoirs in the fall by flipping a jig. Now, with this in mind, you can actually do this same thing on some highland reservoirs. And I'm gonna share that at the end of this video, end of my part from a recent fishing trip that I had. What I like to do on these lowland reservoirs, and a lot of y'all might recognize, is when you're looking at the map, you see that there are parts of the lake that do not have much information at all. There's not any graph co uh, contour lines. That really typically means it is really, really shallow. But if you do see a main creek channel, or if you go to Google Earth and find a drawdown of the lake and you find that creek ditch, that creek ditch could have some water depth to it. So what I like to do, and what I've learned in recent years, and man, y'all, 
two years ago, it was actually during 2020, that man, we got on a bite like this to where we went so far back in this lake, following these creek ditches and then finding the flats to where you could go flip cover such as your stumps, your lay downs, just big old pieces of trees and brush out there on these flats. But what I like to do, as I was talking about a minute ago, is finding areas that are hard to get to. And some people might not want to take their fiberglass boat way in the back of these waters or these creeks that are super shallow. But I'm telling y'all, there are a lot of fish back there that people do not target. And this time of year is a good time to go after them because of the shad that's migrating in these creeks, in these backwater areas. Now with this, you might have to idle a good ways, but that's okay. But what I like to do is, is before I go to the lake, just look at the, uh, look at the Google Earth, look at the map where the creek channels are. I try to get back in these areas and I just try to idle and try to find the deep water. And then when I do, I'm gonna look for the bends in, in the creek, look for a cover that's close by that you can fish. Now, of course, it's easy to, 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 to point out or to see the the obvious cover that's out of water such as your stumps and your lay downs but there are some pieces of cover that you cannot see that are underwater as your stumps there could be logs underwater and y'all I mean depending on your visibility typically in lowland reservoirs the water is pretty stained or, or muddy or right now they might be more clear than typically because we've not had much rain so you might be able to see some with your eyes but you can use your Garmin uh, perspective mode or whatever forward-facing sonar you have that's helped me out in the, in the past two years of using it to try to, to point out these targets and what I like to do is just fl you know when I see these I will throw my moving baits but typically man I like to flip a jig and go set in the hook man that there's nothing like getting a jig bite from where they're you know not too far away man it is just fun it's a blast and that's just one way that I like to do to, to, uh, this time of year in the fall when I'm targeting these fall transition bass now the jig I like to use is, um, and I've talked about it in one other video, but it's that six cents hybrid jig. Y'all, this jig, you know, like I said, it has a big hook for its size. This is the smaller one. I think this is the 5 16 ounce jig here. Uh, I like to throw this one in, and then the half and then the three quarter when I'm fishing more offshore. But this jig's a jig, it's called a hybrid jig because you can swim it, you can fish in brush, rock, and you can flip it. So I like to use this jig when I'm flipping right now. Just to share from a recent trip that I had on a Highland Reservoir Lake, I got back in this creek and I found this flat that was related to a creek channel ditch. Now, up there on the flat was two logs and you know I could see them with my eyes a, a dis, uh, you know good good section away but you know and I threw moving baits at it never got a bite as I got closer to it just so I could see it I was gonna flip it and y'all man I caught some good fish off these two logs way back in this creek on this flat y'all I'm talking I'm in two feet of water but I'm in the middle of the creek like I said, I'm not, I'm not on the bank. I'm not, you know, going down the shoreline. I'm fishing out in the middle of the creek. And this, and this two logs, I, I believe I caught three fish on it in three passes. Like I said, my first pass on it, I caught a good fish right under four pounds. The next time I went by, I caught a two pounder. Then I come by again and catch another two pounder. So it's pretty unique and just, just something that y'all need to keep in mind is, hey, you know, I don't got to go always flip my obvious cover out there in front of me. Now, hey, my setup that I like to use, uh, I will throw heavier Sunline FC Sniper line when I'm, uh, when I'm flipping. So the Sunline FC Sniper fluorocarbon, this right here is 20 pound. I'll throw the heavier line when I'm flipping. And then this is the Denali, Denali Lithium Pro 7.6 Extra Heavy Flipping Rod. This is, um, out of all my Denali's I have, I have the, the Coverts and the Attack Series. This is my only Lithium Pro. And man, it's a good one. Um, I, I know for me, I like to fish shallow a lot and I do like to, I will get some flipping bites at times. So I went ahead and got me the lithium pro for this style of fishing and y'all hopefully learn something on to the next angler anytime you've got falling water temperatures a jig is going to be one of the best baits that you can throw it's a presentation that does a good job at mimicking several different forage species it's a larger offering which is what the fish are looking for a lot of times in the fall months and you can present it in a manner where you keep the bait in the strike zone for a lot longer than other moving baits. And therefore, a jig is a bait that you're gonna wanna throw during the fall months. One of the key things that I do during the fall months is to switch to a trailer that's got floating claws like this Berkeley Champ Craw. The key here is if you have a bait that has floating craws, the bait's gonna have a much slower fall, which allows it to be in the strike zone for a longer period of time. And while it rests on the bottom, 
the crayfish is going to raise the hook up. And one key to think about is in cold water situations, the fish aren't going to be as aggressive. So a lot of times they swim up and they take a little bit of a half bite or it's not nearly as aggressive as it would be in the summer. So if you've got a uh, floating craws or floating claws, what happens is that allows the fish to suck that bait in better. You've got good bulk and they're gonna be able to get that hook. If you go with a traditional trailer style bait that doesn't have the floating craws or is not very buoyant, a lot of times you get those short strikes in the cold water period. So that's one tip that I like to do in the fall months. Another thing that I like to do is make sure that I'm using a jig that has a uh, line tie that matches the cover I'm fishing. So generally speaking in the fall, I like to fish hard targets, docks, stumps, laydowns, rocks. The reason I'm doing that is those hard targets are absorbing sunlight, producing heat, and the fish like to sit around those objects. But when I'm doing that, I wanna make sure that I've got a perpendicular line tie to my hook. The reason for that is this will come up and over the limbs of the branch, over rocks, over dock posts, a lot better than a parallel line tie. A parallel line tie would work much better in the grass. So if I'm fishing around a patch of good green grass, I'm gonna to wanna to stick with a parallel line tie. Choosing the right rod and reel is an important factor to being a good jig fisherman. If you have a rod that's too light, you're probably not gonna stick the hook in the fish. If you've got a rod that's too heavy, you might miss hook sets. What I like to use is a seven foot four light heavy action rod. So it's a fast action, but it's not quite something you'd wanna use for flipping. This is an FP885 by MHX. It's a rod that I built. And then I match it up here just with a fast gear ratio reel. This is an Abu Garcia Revo ALF 8.0 to 1 speed reel. So it'll pick up that slack line fast if a fish eats it and starts swimming at you, which they often do in shallow water. And then I generally like to go with fluorocarbon. In this case, this is 17 pound, 100% Berkeley fluorocarbon. If the cover dictates it, I'll go up to a braided line. But generally speaking, I try not to use braided line as much around wood as possible because that braid will saw into the wood a lot of times. So if I can get away with a heavy fluorocarbon, that's what I'll stick with. But choosing the right rod and reel combo is something that will drastically improve your jig fishing. Really quick, if you guys enjoy the content in this video and want more personalized instruction, head to our website, fishthemoment.com, then go to the virtual lessons page. Here you can book one-on-one -on -one virtual lessons with each member of the Fish the Moment team. In these one hour lessons, the Fish Moment team member will break down your lake using Google Earth and a contour line map and answer any questions you have. Whether you're preparing for an upcoming fishing tournament or a fun weekend on the lake, make sure you sign up for one of these one-on-one -on -one virtual lessons so you're fully prepared to catch as many fish as possible on the water. Check them out at fishthemoment.com. I hope these jig fishing tips were helpful no matter where you live in the country. If you have topics that you want us to cover, throw that in the comment section. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and guys, stay tuned. We'll have a new bass fishing declassified episode coming soon.